Without you, I am hopeless. Tell me who you are. You are the keeper of my heart. You are the keeper of my heart. And I'm restless. I'm restless to have.
Part of the uh, hospitality ministry. Welcome to Mass on this Palm Sunday, and a warm welcome to our visitors or those who haven't been with us for a while. We are happy that we can worship together today. For those who are joining us online, we welcome you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us in worship. Before we begin, please take a moment to turn off your cell phones or switch them to silent mode so that we can all focus on Jesus. And now, let us pray the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, please quietly proceed to the garden outside the chapel, over there, for the blessing of palms. Please exit the church through the main entrance or any of the side entrance. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Together we gather, today we gather together to, be her to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. This mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that being made of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify thee with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tattered and a coat with them. Untie, untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, Reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the coat and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God 
helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him all you offspring of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at that name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ became obedient for us to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him and gave them the name above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it gave it to disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, he and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into temptation, for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. 
and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see what, how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they may, might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testified against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do you still need witnesses? You have, no, you have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, 
they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourselves. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the, land, the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, 
This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead and the last deception would be, would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The most fruitful three hours of Jesus' life was his dying on the cross. Uh, most people think of Jesus as a great teacher, but they forget that Jesus was also a priest, and priests offer sacrifice. And on the cross, Jesus offered pure love to God the Father, and that was more important, more fruitful than any of Jesus' teachings. What is the most fruitful hour of our week? What does the most good? Because Mass here makes present Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, Mass should be the most fruitful hour of our week. But we know coming to Mass can often be very difficult. We all come probably distracted. A lot of us come here busy. Some of us might be even in physical pain. Some of us might even come here with very little faith. Uh, for years, parents have told me, as soon as they have children, it's so hard to pray at Mass. They're standing there trying to take care of a baby and they can't concentrate. Now, I 
totally understand. It actually took me 10 years to learn how to pray well at Mass as a priest. I had spent so long, just like you as a layperson, praying. I could pray well. As soon as I became a priest, 10 years. Because I have to think about this homily. I've got to worry about the choir, the altar servers, so many things. So many distractions. But if we can enter into Jesus' love on the cross, then we can join our prayer with his. The Passion today says, From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. So darkness signifies God's judgment. So the world has rejected Jesus, it's rejected God the Father's love, and the world now is heading into spiritual darkness. And later on in the narrative, when the earth quakes, that again is a sign of God's judgment. And that was predicted by the prophet Amos. Whenever we come to Mass, you have to realize you're going to probably be surrounded by darkness. There's going to be perhaps darkness in your heart. There might be even darkness around you. So if Mass is the making present of Jesus' sacrifice, it makes sense. There is darkness during Jesus' uh, sacrifice on Good Friday. There's going to be darkness around us when we come to Mass. So just from now on, make a very simple mental adjustment. When you come to Mass, it's very likely you will be tempted. Stop being surprised. We'll just... We're going to accept it. That's just part of the Mass. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus feels totally separated from God the Father, but is he? He definitely feels it. And it's amazing that he experiences the separation that all of us experience but Jesus is not separated from God the Father. He feels it, but he's not. The Father is with him. And in the same way, sometimes you're going to come to Mass, you might feel like you're separated from God. Now, if you are separated from God, just apologize, confess sins, ask his forgiveness. But let's say someone's going through cancer. Let's say someone comes to Mass and they've just lost a loved one. Let's say You've just got huge financial problems. Those things, honestly, as painful as they are, they could even be your darkest hour. They don't separate you from God. And when you come to Mass in that state, okay, you're not separated. The words Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So most of us know these are the words from Psalm 22. Psalm 22 begins this way. Now here's a question. If I say to you, hey, everyone, let's pray the Our Father. Do we just say Our Father and that's it? Our Father. No, we say the rest of the prayer. In the same way, this Psalm 22, this is how it begins, but the rest of the prayer ends in trust. It ends praising God. This is why we know Jesus when he was dying. He never gave up on God the Father and he never gave up his faith. There will be times when we come to Mass, let's say we don't want to be here. It is okay if we tell that to God the Father, as long as we stay here. And then, in your prayer, if the best you can do is just make a short prayer to Jesus at Mass, you just say to Jesus, Jesus, I love you. If that's all you can do at Mass, that's very precious. Because when Jesus was on the cross, all he could muster was short prayers. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was short of breath. If let's say you're really distracted, a lot is bothering you, if you can just say short prayers, that's very precious to Jesus. So if you, let's say, are in pain or there's a great trial in your life right now and you still come to Mass, that is very precious to Jesus. Good for you. God bless you for coming. When some of the bystanders heard it, heard Jesus cry. They said, this man is calling for Elijah. So, right, they're confusing Eli, that he said, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, Eli meaning my God. They're confusing that with Elijah's name. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. Now, we actually don't know what the soldiers here are doing. They could be trying to cause Jesus more pain, maybe not. Now, if they are, 
This is symbolic of one of the hardest things that happens to us. Sometimes we can come to church, we're already in pain, and someone around us makes it worse. Here's the thing, Jesus perseveres. He doesn't give up. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the precise words in the Greek are yielded his spirit, meaning he freely chose to give up his life to God as a sacrifice. God always wants us to love him freely. Now, when we're children and we're living at our parents' home, it's right that they make us come to Mass. That's good. They make us go to school. They make us play sports. That's all good. But as adults, God wants a free choice. So are we willing to follow Jesus no matter the pain? Are you willing to follow Jesus even when it hurts? When we freely come to Mass and we give our hearts to God, this is the most precious sacrifice we can give. It's so beautiful, just as Jesus' offering was beautiful. Our culture has conditioned us to think that there are so many better things to do, let's say on Sunday. Our culture says spending time with family is more important than God, or playing sports, or I'm going to take an optional shift at work. Uh, those things are not the most fruitful things in life. The most fruitful three hours of Jesus' life is his sacrifice on the cross in obedience, trust, and love. And when we join ourselves to Jesus' sacrifice at Mass, no matter how difficult it is, nothing is more precious to God than this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the whole world come to know the perfect love of God the Father, made known in the suffering and death of his son on the cross, and so respond to their love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Catholics love the Mass, that they realize that it is the same sacrifice of Christ on the cross, but in an unbloody way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Knowing that the Mass can be the most fruitful hour of our week, May we never miss Sunday Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Holy Spirit help us to make short but intense prayer all day long and with great love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, Father, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly, willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sabaoth, Plenis Urche, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, quit Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Would you be seated for a moment, please? Well, thank you to everyone who uh, brought canned goods uh, for the doors open to support that uh, CWL and school initiative, so God bless you for doing that. We have our penitential service tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Probably try your best to come between 6.30 and 7.30, because if you come after that and uh, the other priests are gone, <laughs> so you might find yourself without a priest. So 6.30 to 7.30 tomorrow night. A uh, reminder for this Wednesday, there's no confessions or mass Wednesday night, because all the priests are heading to the cathedral for the Chrism Mass. Holy Thursday Mass is 7 p.m., not our usual 6. That way, by the time we go downstairs for the altar of repose, it will already be dark by then. So that's the point of that. And also, since we have the 
adoration all through the night, starting Holy Thursday night until Good Friday at noon, really encouraging everyone to come, spend some time, come in the, in the middle of the night, and encouraging us particular uh, the men, just that we want men there all through the night. So if you can come and make that sacrifice, that would be good. And that's it. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.